I mentioned in uh, previous videos that um, there's a certain degree of egoism involved in wanting to be a moral person, and that's pretty much the um, the weakness or the flaw that is exploited by the advanced mind gamer. Um, if you want to be a moral person, that's essentially you want to be more moral than the rest of people, or at least above average morality, and there's a certain degree of egoism there. Why do you want to do the right thing? Um, it goes to sort of murderous extremes in cultures that have honor violence, um, where you know you, you want to be seen as a moral person by everybody else, and you will go to insane lengths to prove just how moral you are. In fact, you'll become bloody immoral in your <laughs> quest for morality. Yeah quest for a reputation for morality. Gandhi understood that the British saw themselves, and they still do see themselves, as a profoundly moral people. Um, in fact, a lot of continental Europeans say that that's very irritating about the English in particular, is their, their desire to be moral. And it's also kind of evident in British humor, English humor in particular, where the English like to ridicule themselves for being such horrible hypocrites. That's a Canadian attribute as well. Canadians are, are if anything, even worse than the, than the English are at wanting to be holier than thou. Uh, that's why I can read through these, these things so well. I live that kind of mind game all the time. Um, that's why Canadians have such a reputation of being such moral and wonderful and nice people, you see, because we play that game very well, whereas we're just people like anybody else. <laughs> There's no difference between us and, or, and an American or anybody else, for that matter. Um, <clears throat> now, you use that suffering offensively. It's an offensive weapon in order to, you know, design to coerce people. Just, you know, listen to your stereotypical, um, you know, uh, Jewish comedian, stand-up comedian talking about his mother. You know, it's just, you know, she messes with my head all the time and, you know, uh, is passive-aggressive and, you know, this kind of thing. And... and it's an effective means of disciplining your kids. Okay, little Bobby, do you want to be a moral person? Yes, I want to be a moral person. I want to be a good boy, mummy. Okay, um, that's good. Now that we've established that, I'll tell you what morality is, and I'll keep telling you for as long as I can. <laughs> and all that time, I'm molding your character. That's powerful. Um, that's powerful stuff. And, you know, the, the, the passive aggression about, you know, the stereotypical Jewish mother who's always on about, you know, the, wh all the horrible things she's willing to bear for, her, for the welfare of her children and the martyr she is and everything. Um, Irish sisters are like that, too, and Irish mothers are to a certain extent like that, too. <laughs> That's kind of a stereotype, but really guilt-laden society, uh, Irish Catholic society. <laughs> and a lot of passive aggression and victimhood and the exploitation of victimhood. Again, that's, I come by this stuff honestly. Um, so you, you set yourself up as the victim who is suffering, and that gives you power. Now, um, Addendum would be a lot better at pushing his um, passive aggressive agenda and um, turning suffering into a god and guilt into another god um, if he was a little bit nice about it. Luckily, he's not nice at all. Uh, well, he may be nice, but his persona isn't nice. <laughs> he may be the opposite of me. I'm not nice, but my persona is a nice guy. Uh, but I think people see through that. Um, there are nicer passive-aggressive types out there. A fellow by the, who goes by the handle of Trick uh, is just like Gary, but he plays you know, the passive-aggressive, the polite guy to a T, but he's doing the same thing Gandhi is. He's, he's saying, I'm suffering, that gives me moral authority over others. Uh, suffering is the only thing that has value, therefore you listen to those people who suffer. Um, now, I'm not saying that these individuals have done anything new or that they're, they've, they've, they've done something particularly pernicious. This has been around since the dawn of time. They're just using the, the same tools that they've inherited, say, from the Christians, who in inherited them apparently from the Hebrews or whatever. Um, personally, as I mentioned a while back in one of Pyro's hangouts, I think that the Irish developed this guilt-based, passive-aggressive um, stuff independently. Uh, it looks that way um, in terms of, say, the Druids. Uh, the Druids had power over... They were sort of like the Catholic priests in Poland. 
they had power over the average or the the, the masses of the the Celts, and uh, the Romans saw that, so they just wiped the Druids out, killed them all off. That was the end of the Druids, the Romans. Um, as they the Romans understood the dynamics of that kind of power. Um, if we're to control the Celts, we either make our peace with the Druids, or we kill them off. So the, they did a particularly Roman thing, and they murdered all the Druids, slaughtered them all. End of story. Um, no more passive-aggressive problems. Power is back where it belongs, with the strong, not with the weak. Um, so yeah, it's the, the willingness to suffer plays on the subtle egoism in all of our minds to empathize with the underdog, to empathize with the little guy, to empathize with the guy who's had to put up with the most. Um, be careful. Empathy can be used offensively. And it can be used offensively in a way where you don't even know you're being attacked. 